There's no denying that side projects are important, especially if you don't have a lot of experience in software engineering. However, I've been noticing a worrying trend in the resumes I look at with regards to side projects. I see a lot of young software engineers work on side projects just for the sake of having one on their resume. I suppose that's better than not having any at all, but the problem is that having generic side projects that every other software engineer has worked on on your resume defies the purpose. When I see side projects on a resume, I want to have a conversation about them, understand why you worked on that, how you came up with the idea, what you learned along the way, and what challenges you faced. But if the side project is super generic and lacks any complexity, it is kind of hard to get excited about. So in this video, I will give you pointers on how you should approach side projects in a way that not only helps you accelerate your learning and makes the whole project fun and exciting, but also boosts your chances of getting hired. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's start by talking about the problem with randomly picking generic side projects. First, you don't really factor in your own interest when picking random projects that others have worked on as well. And as a result, it doesn't really reflect your passions. Second, you focus on the end result of having something on your resume instead of your learning goals. And especially if you follow tutorials, you don't factor in progressive learning, without which your learning model is ineffective and gives you a false sense of competence. Fourth, in most cases, you end up building an overly simplified clone of something else, which does not really force you to think creatively or outside the box. Fifth, random side projects encourage you to bounce around trivial projects without paying attention to gaining meaningful knowledge. And finally, you focus too much on languages and frameworks instead of the actual project itself. With that said, here is how I think you should approach side projects. This will not only help you replicate how software is built in the real world, but the learning is based on progression. So you start off basic and make your way through more complex features, focusing on a well laid out learning objective instead of the end goal of decorating your resume. I'm going to pick a simple side project, but instead of suggesting it as an example, I'll list out all the areas that I think are critical for every software engineer to learn in 2022 that you should factor in when choosing your side projects. We will start off simple and build on top of it so you can see how to pick a side project and progress through it with learning as your main focus. So for today's example side project, let's say that we want to build a task management system, something like Trello. Let's see how we can take that simple idea and work on it in a way where we hit all the major areas that are important to learn in 2022. First, find an idea you are passionate about and build an MVP. The key term here is MVP, which stands for a minimum viable product. Basically means the minimum set of features you need to validate the usefulness of a project. This is something you will do all the time in the real world. You have a set of ideas for your project, but you build an MVP to validate those hypotheses. Then you add more features to build on top of the MVP. So in case of a task management system, we want something very simple. Let's say users can log in and create a project. Each project can then have tasks which are made up of a title and a status. Title can be something as simple as a text and status can be to do, doing and done. And this is our MVP. Basically, you don't want to overcommit until you validate that the project you want to work on is something you're passionate about. So now that you've got your MVP, set up version control. Don't keep all your code locally. You can use something like Git. Regardless of where you work, you will be using version control of some kind. So it's a great skill to learn early on. Not only that, as you work on different projects, you will also start building your code portfolio online. Third, cover breadth first and then focus on depth. In 2022, as a software engineer, you should be well-versed in the entire development stack. So whatever side project you pick, try to work on the entire stack. This includes the front end, authentication, APIs, back end, and data stores. You will naturally lean towards certain layers, say the front end or UX if you are creative, or back end logic if you are into problem solving, data structures, and algorithms. And that's okay but you should at least be exposed to the entire set of components that make up a modern web application. So factor in that when you pick a side project. For the task management system, you want to build a UX. It can be something simple, web-based, responsive layout that can work on mobile devices as well. Since the projects are based on individual users, you'd want to add authentication as well. Your front end will also likely communicate to your back end via APIs. 
The benefit of having web-based APIs for your backend entry points is that if you decide to swap out your front end for a mobile app, you can simply reuse the same APIs. Then there's the actual logic of how you manage the tasks. And then finally, the persistent store that maintains the project state. So the next thing is algorithms and data structures. As you're working on your backend code or frontend code, you will use a bunch of data structures. Data structures are unavoidable. You'll regularly use simple ones like lists and maps in your day-to-day -day work. But if your site project can also utilize some complex data structures like linked lists, trees, graphs, and along with some effective algorithms, they will stand out even more. For example, maybe you want to cache the tasks that your users create in memory until they change so that you don't have to hit the database all the time. You could potentially write your own LRU cache for that. Maybe you introduce priority to your tasks. How do you sort them? Perhaps you want to consider heaps. Thinking about these will not only polish your data structures and algorithms, but also expose you to infrastructural components like caching. Next is to use existing libraries and public APIs. While writing your own implementation is a great way to learn, most of the times you will integrate existing libraries and APIs into your projects. Being able to take something someone else has written and effectively use that to solve your own problem by reading documentation and looking at examples is an important skill. So it's a great idea to get used to that. For example, let's say you want to add some collaborative features to your task management application. Maybe you want to add video conferencing functionality to your application so that users can easily hop on a call while they're managing or discussing the tasks in their project. You obviously don't want to deal with implementing the whole thing yourself, so you'd probably utilize a third-party platform like Agora, who have kindly also sponsored today's video. Agora is a leading video, voice, and live interactive streaming platform, helping developers deliver rich in-app experiences, including embedded video, voice, chat, real-time recording, interactive live streaming, and real-time messaging. Agora offers fully customizable SDKs and flexible APIs that enable you to integrate rich in-app experiences into your application. The beauty of their SDKs is that they provide multiple options, low-code, no-code, or full developer SDK solutions to build any real-time application. Since we are talking about side projects or early in production applications, let's say you're using React as your framework, you can add video chat or live streaming to your application in literally five lines of code. And it's cool if you're using some other JS framework, you can just use their UI kit as a web component to get the same results. Their UI kit abstracts out the complexities of adding video functionality to your application and simplifies it so that you can implement it even as an inexperienced software engineer. But if you want to add more advanced feature, you can always extend their SDK. The Kit is responsive with multiple layouts, supports video call and live broadcasting, buttons to disable camera and microphone, as well as certain video filters, screen share, camera switching, and many other useful features. So yeah, their low code option is definitely a great integration and enrichment for your side project that comes with some pretty awesome video features. And the best of all, they give you 10,000 free minutes of usage every month. So do check them out. Visit the link in the description below to get started for free. Okay, the next thing you need to consider is DevOps. I've made an entire video on why DevOps is important to learn in 2022, but incorporating that into your side project by setting it up in a version controlled manner with continuous integration and deployment is a great way to get started with it. Not only that, if you end up collaborating with friends on your side project, a robust CI CD pipeline will really improve your collaboration experience. And in addition to that, when potential employers peek at your project in GitHub or something like that, a healthy code base that is regularly deployed and tested really looks good. So the next thing is machine learning, data engineering, and experimentation. While machine learning isn't critical, since most companies have dedicated engineers for data science, I still encourage you to incorporate some machine learning into your project, even if it's a simple learning model like a decision tree. This also goes hand in hand with data engineering and experimentation. Any feature you add needs to be validated with data. So instrumentation and telemetry becomes critical. Even if your application itself does not involve machine learning, you can collect instrumentation data from your app that can run through various learning models, providing you intelligent insights into the usage of your application. That being said, instrumentation data can be high volume depending on how you design it. So you will get exposed to things like message queues and data pipelines, which are critical components of modern day applications. For the task management app, for example, you can collect data when tasks are created, when they move, when the statuses change, log errors when something does not work, you get the idea. This data can provide rich analytics that you can use to make future decisions for upcoming features. The next one is scalability, availability, and disaster recovery. 
This one, I'll admit, is kind of difficult to test in a side project, but the concepts are important and there are ways you can get started with those on your side project. These two tend to be advanced topics, so consider them optional. However, if you have made your way to learning some cloud services and containers, you can set your project up with these things in mind. A lot of cloud services come with ready-made solutions for backups, failovers, and disaster recovery. So even if you're just going through, reading up on them, and checking boxes to enable or disable them, you will learn a thing or two about them. In terms of scaling, they also have ready-made slider-based solutions that are based on pooling, or if you've figured out containers, you can configure scale out based on your container pods if you want to go advanced. Like I said before, these are advanced topics and hard to emulate for small side projects, but just keeping them in mind will give you a big leg up as a beginner software engineer. Okay, so that takes care of the final point on my list. If you noticed, I didn't really mention any programming language or framework in this list. That was intentional because they don't matter as much as the actual concepts and how you progress through them, from simple to implement areas to advanced concepts. If you cover most of these areas in your learning model and your side project, what specific programming language or framework you choose does not really matter. I hope I've made that point clear. And I also hope that this video is useful. Check out some of these other videos I think you'll enjoy as well. Subscribe to this channel for more software engineering content. And remember to follow me on Instagram where I do monthly Q&As with all my followers. Thanks for stopping by and staying till the end. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.